In some areas of the US, hunting wild pigs, also known as feral pigs, that destroy agriculture has become an important solution to control this animal. Wild pigs are considered one of the species that cause serious damage to farmers' crops and land. They not only eat crops, but also cause soil erosion and destroy local ecosystems. Some places in the US, especially states like Texas, have deployed the use of helicopters and guns to hunt these wild pigs. This is an effective method to control the number of wild pigs. Because they reproduce very quickly and move across large areas of land. This process often takes place under the supervision of hunting and conservation experts. Using weapons such as rifles from helicopters to shoot wild pigs from above. The use of helicopters allows hunters to easily access difficult terrain and have a wider view to detect and destroy wild pigs quickly and effectively. This method has helped reduce the damage that feral pigs cause to farmers. but has also caused ethical and environmental controversy in some communities. Hunting feral pigs with helicopters and guns is not only an urgent solution to protect crops but also reflects the scale of the problem. Feral pigs in the US, especially in southern states such as Texas, Alabama, and Florida, have grown in large numbers and reproduce very quickly. Each female pig can give birth to two to three litters per year. Each litter can be up to 10 to 12 pigs. This leads to a rapid increase in numbers. Causing huge losses to farmers. In addition to destroying crops, feral pigs also cause serious problems such as soil erosion when feral pigs dig up the ground in search of food. They remove topsoil, causing erosion and affecting natural irrigation systems. Spread of disease. Wild pigs can carry a variety of dangerous diseases, such as African swine fever and leptospirosis, which can be transmitted to livestock and even humans. Competition with native wildlife. Wild pigs often compete with native animals for food and shelter. causing ecological imbalance. Although the use of helicopters and guns to hunt wild pigs is considered a powerful and effective measure, it is also controversial. Some people believe that this method is too brutal, inhumane and can have negative impacts on the environment, while others believe that this is the only way to control the wild pig population quickly. Some states other than Texas have begun to research alternative measures, such as using large traps or chemical methods to reduce the reproductive capacity of wild pigs. However, the use of aircraft and guns is still the method applied in many places due to its immediate effectiveness. In addition to helicopters and guns, feral pig control in the United States involves a range of other methods to minimize long-term impacts. Here are some additional methods used. Wild pig trapping is one of the most common methods in many states. Traps are usually made of metal mesh or sturdy fencing, large enough to trap an entire herd of pigs. Once the pigs are trapped, they cannot escape. This method is often less controversial than using weapons, but it also requires patience and constant monitoring. Scientists have researched and developed chemical methods to control the reproductive capacity of feral pigs. Some drugs have been tested to reduce the fertility of female pigs without harming the environment. 
However, applying these methods has many challenges, especially in ensuring that feral pigs have access to enough drugs. In addition to large-scale helicopter hunting campaigns, some states also promote wild pig hunting as a sport activity. This helps control the wild pig population while providing an additional source of income for hunters. Sport hunting is usually done on the ground, with the supervision of conservation agencies and professional guides. Professional hunting dogs are also used to hunt wild pigs in some areas. Dogs are effective at tracking and chasing wild pigs in dents. In accessible areas, this method is often combined with the use of firearms. And although less widely used, it is still a preferred solution for some hunters. Some experts recommend modifying or improving wild pig habitat to limit their reproduction and spread. This may include protecting food or water sources, building fences around vulnerable areas, or changing cropping patterns to reduce their attractiveness of the land for wild pigs. Ethical and environmental issues. The use of helicopters and guns, while effective, is also ethically controversial. Some animal rights groups argue that mass culling is not a sustainable way to address the problem. They worry that using guns from helicopters can cause pain to pigs if they do not hit a critical point immediately. There are also concerns about the environmental impact of using helicopters and guns, such as noise and disturbance to other wildlife in the area. One of the biggest challenges in controlling feral pigs is their extremely rapid reproduction rate. Feral pigs can start reproducing as early as six months of age, and a female can produce two to three litters of up to 10 to 12 piglets per year. This means that despite effective hunting and trapping campaigns, feral pig populations can rebound quickly if not continuously controlled. To address this problem, a combination of management measures must be implemented in a coordinated manner. Relying on a single method, such as helicopter hunting, will not be enough to keep feral pig populations under control in the long term. Population control and interstate cooperation become even more important as feral pig populations increase rapidly. The challenge of protecting forests and natural environments. Wild pigs not only cause damage to farmers, but also threaten natural ecosystems, especially forests and wetlands. They often move deep into densely forested areas in search of food, competing with native wildlife for resources and habitat. This has prompted the need for more systematic management of protected areas and wild lands. Raising horses on the prairies is a popular activity in the United States, especially in states with vast terrain and vast grasslands such as Texas, Wyoming, and Montana. However, this is not usually directly related to fishermen, because horse farming and fishing are two different industries with separate natural conditions and needs. The American prairies, especially states such as Texas, Wyoming, Colorado, and Montana, provide an ideal environment for raising horses. The vast grasslands with abundant natural food sources from young grass and suitable climate are the main reasons why these regions have become horse breeding centers. The
open terrain and spacious space allow horses to move freely, helping them grow healthier. Horses raised on farms often serve many different purposes, including working horses on large farms. Horses are still used to herd livestock, especially in areas where the terrain is difficult to access by motor vehicles. Horses for sport and recreation. Many horse farms serve sports such as horse racing, horse riding, rodeo, bull riding and horned horses in the American West. Good horses that are well trained can bring great economic value in competitions. Horses as pets. Many people in the US keep horses not only for work purposes but also for the love of this animal. Horses are considered pets and companions in outdoor activities. Horse farming plays an important role in the rural economy in many states. Some horse farms in the US are very large, with scales ranging from hundreds to thousands of horses. Horses are not only sold domestically but also exported to other countries, bringing significant income to breeders. In addition, Horse farms are also combined with the agricultural tourism industry. Many people like to go to farms to experience farm life, ride horses on the prairie and participate in outdoor activities. This creates an additional source of income for many horse farms. Harsh climate, although the steppe is a good place for raising horses. It is not without its challenges. Especially in the winter, horse farms need to prepare food reserves and shelters for horses to survive the cold weather. Care and maintenance costs. Raising horses requires a lot of money. From providing food, health care, vaccinations, regular health checks, to maintaining facilities, barns, grazing areas. This is especially important for large farms where managing a large number of horses requires significant human and financial resources. Although horse breeding and fishing are two different industries, in some coastal areas, fishermen can also engage in horse breeding activities as a secondary source of income. Especially if they own agricultural land on the steppe. However, this is not common, as fishermen usually focus on exploiting marine resources such as fish, shrimp, and other seafood. In general, horse farming in the United States is mainly developed in the vast rural areas rather than the coastal areas where fishermen live. Raising horses on the prairie brings great benefits to people, not only economically but also culturally, as horses are associated with the image of the Wild West and the typical cowboy lifestyle of America. on many ranches on the American prairie. Horse breeding not only serves an economic purpose but also plays an important role in land management. Horses grazing on large grasslands help maintain and develop the natural ecosystem of the prairie. This practice not only benefits the health of the horses but also improves the quality of the soil and pasture. As horses contribute to the distribution of nutrients through controlled movement and grazing. Large ranches, 